What up everybody, how's it all going? Welcome back to Medieval Mayhem, my name is Ben. Today we're doing a different project. It's really hot in Australia and you go through a whole lot of water. I find doing a lot of presentations and stuff, you really go through a whole lot of water. It's difficult to, to keep that in the theme of the, and the aesthetic of the medieval. And so I've been looking for a way to get around that. Obviously plastic water bottles just don't cut it. And that really only leaves something of a period. And this is what we've come up with. I'm so happy with this. This is absolutely choice. So, so happy. So let's have a look at how we built this. Um, really not a hard project to do. It'll take you about a day. This is called a costral. In the period of the medieval times, this would have been made probably for most people out of clay. Clay was simply just so available everywhere and it would have been very typical for most people to have access to some kind of a kiln or whatever to process the clay. But I'm going with a leather one uh, as my character is a status character, has uh, some means and some wealth so I thought let's do this. I happen to have some spare leather and so I decided to give it a crack and see how, what I could come up with. The initial shape I decided to go with is just a simple circle and I made that just onto a piece of paper with a compass. The next thing I decided to do was to draw on the handles and I've done this just with a clay cup that I happen to have lying around. Now a piece of paper is just folded in half therefore once I've cut it out I'm going to have a perfectly symmetrical shape. So here I am doing the, the nozzle, which is the rectangular piece at the top, and then also, um, and then we're doing so yeah, the cutting it out. Okay, yeah, nice and easy. Um, just remember when you are cutting, obviously try and keep to using a sharp blade. It's much, much safer to use a sharp blade than a blunt one. All right, so as we're cutting out the leather, um, I was using probably about a two millimeter, just over two millimeter thick piece of leather. Uh, you can go, go, go thicker than that, you can go thinner probably. Um, this is simply what I had and I was trying to keep it cost effective with a bit of a scrap kind of piece project. So obviously with that cut out then the next piece was just to flip that over and just to trace it around the other piece of leather. So I've got perfectly symmetrical shapes as they're just going to get sandwiched together. Uh, the next part of the process is called stitch grooving. Uh, I find this really, really useful. Um, it's a simple tool, cost you a couple of dollars off eBay. And um, what it does is it means the stitching is actually slightly below the line of the leather and uh, um, all of your stitching is going to be a consistent um, width from the, the side of the project. So that's a really good kind of uh, idea to use. Now I use a, uh, a pretty simple hole, um, hole punch, just a 4-in-1 and a 2-in-1 hole punch. Um, I find this works really well for me. Audio. I decided to colour it in at this stage to use a dye. I like to um, just wet the leather down and that way you get a much more consistent spread of the dye. We'll talk about dyeing and some of the individual specific leather techniques in, in a, a different video or series of videos that are coming up in the next few weeks. Then the next part I did was I used a, a leather lacquer and this helps to protect the, lay, the dye from elements like the sun and the rain and whatnot um, and just keeps your project looking so much nicer for so much longer. Okay so on the flip side I decided to put a, a lion on the front. This was pretty cool. Um, I happened to buy a stencil just recently not necessarily for this project, actually for some other stuff that I was doing and I thought, oh, you know what, it'll um, work pretty well perfectly for this. So, I stamped that on and um, used a stylus just to trace around the outside just to um, find my lines and I used a, a background beveling tool um, which I, I picked up off eBay just to give me a bit of a really sort of make that image kind of pop out. I decided to paint that with a water-based paint from Tamiya, uh, which is some paints I've had for a while. They're really good and work really well with leather projects. Uh, we actually did two coats on there and that's come up really well. And I did the nails and the tongue in red as would be the case uh, for the rest of my kind of uh, imagery. 
All right, um, and then I just again did the uh, the brown dye and the uh, the lacquer on top. That's come out really, really well. Really happy with that. Uh, one quick point uh, with with the dyeing, I tend to find it best to use a glove, um, just a latex exam glove that you can buy in bulk. I got Maxpedition ones for some reason from my local hardware store. They were doing them pretty cheaply, so I just picked up a bunch there. Um, but you know, you can use just the ones off eBay or whatever. And what it does, it just helps keep the dye off your fingers. Otherwise, you've got brown dye on your fingers, and it looks a bit weird. I found the whole stitching process took me like 20 minutes, uh, if that, it just wasn't a long process at all. Uh, and what I do is I just stitch right the way around one side and then right the way back again. It's basically saddle stitching, it's incredibly strong uh, and for a project like this really useful. What I then done was I wet the leather, okay, we got everything nice and solid all together and I soaked the leather in water for about 10 minutes or so. Uh, and the reason for that, that just makes it nice and supple. And then we filled it with popcorn kernels. You can use rice, pasta, people use all sorts of weird stuff. And the idea of that is just to fill out the water bottle whilst it dries. So I left mine for 24 hours and it worked really well. A smallish water bottle like this is, is about 600 ml, just as a point of reference there. I decided to seal the inside of my costrel with beeswax. Beeswax has lots of advantages. It's, um, it's very easy to use, it's very available. It's quite cost effective compared to things like brewer's pitch and pine pitch. That is for me anyway, I don't have a lot of pine forest around where I live. In addition, uh, so I'm going to use a double boiler method just with one of these old, I think it's a soup can. Anyway. Um, the reason for that is that if you use beeswax inside your ordinary saucepan, you'll find it leaves a residue and you'll never get it out. That's not so good. On the inside of a costrel though, it's really cool because it leaves a beeswax kind of aftertaste and it'll always be there, which is nice. And as you can see, that's melting away already. Once that was all melted, I then just poured the beeswax inside the costrel. Um, that was a really easy process and I found it took about two or three coats for that to work properly to really kind of soak into all the holes and to really kind of expand in all that surface area and to, to waterproof it. Once that was done, it was all done. It's, that's the, pretty much it for the pro process. Uh, I made a, um, just a small carry strap which works perfectly and that just keeps it nice and out of the way. Um, it's a nice, slim, kind of low profile kind of water bottle and that works absolutely perfect for me. Wow, I'm so happy. This has come out super, super well and just such a great little project to do. You can buy, like to give you an idea, the beeswax you can get pretty much just everywhere. Um, only look on Marketplace, Facebook Marketplace, that kind of thing, Gumtree, any of those kind of local classifieds, wherever you are and you'll find that there are people selling it. It's not that expensive. As for leather, you can contact leather artisans in the area and most people are selling like off cuts or have off cuts that they can get rid of and you can pick those up real easily. Um, the dyes and the paints are a little bit more specialist and you'd need to buy them in. Um, again, there's, there's leather shops all around the place so that's not a hard thing to do. You just gotta, Google it and find out what's close to you, what'll ship to you. And then as a project for me, this was just a straightforward, this has taken me probably um, overnight, but there's about two hours worth of work total in that. Uh, so really not a bad thing to do. And if you're looking for like little projects for your kids to do, um, then this is a great one to do. Like it just really is a nice little craft project Lots of fun, lots of um, just really easy, um, and especially with, with like Christmas coming up and you want to keep kids occupied over the holidays, this is something really cool. In Australia, where I am at the moment, um, there's actually a storm brewing outside, so this is why I'm sort of rushing this through. Um, but this is kind of the off-season for medieval reenactment. We 
kind of have a pretty tight reenactment schedule. Sort of goes from uh, kind of late February in the colder parts of Australia. I say cold, it's not really that cold. Um, right through to maybe sort of September, I think is the last kind of event in, in Australia. Most of the events though tend to occur over, it's a pretty condensed period in sort of June, July. Uh, and they're spread out like all over the place, but it's really cool, a lot of fun. Uh, and if you're into medieval reenactment, I'll be at the Abbey festivals most years. I'll be around. I'm pretty um, pretty easy to find, <laughs> and I certainly don't hide. I'm always with my crew. Although we're hoping to start actually doing the events this year, so there's a few events on our list that we want to do. That's this year, as in 2024, we are first events. So looking forward to catching up and if you do go to any of those events, please um, find us and say hi. I'd very much like to look forward to, um, to catching up with some of my subscribers and, uh, and see how you're all doing. So there we go guys, a nice, simple, easy project, not very expensive and like let's face it, you can buy these though like 80 bucks uh, for a basic one. Um, I'm not very thrilled with the, like, the commercial ones. I've got friends of mine who've offered to make them for me in the past and they've been like um, a lot more than that because I like to pay for stuff. I'm not someone who just does favours. I don't like owing people stuff too much really. Uh, I'd much rather pay for it and just know that it's a fair exchange. But I thought I'd give this a crack myself um, and it's come out pretty happy. I I'm, I'm really stoked. So, okay, if you've ever done anything like this, let me know in the comments below. How's it worked for you? I'd be really thrilled, really excited to hear from you. Please like, subscribe, and share. I'll catch you in my next video.